So this is my data visualization in mixed reality proof of concept where I take uh, some data from our world in data website. For example, I'm seeing how the carbon emission intensity relates to the GDP per capita for particular countries. And then I'm plotting that in, in 3D space using mixed reality on my Oculus Quest 3 headset and using the full color pass through. Uh, and this is kind of neat. I could do a few things, different things with this data. For example, I can uh, hide the country names so they're on or off or I can um, toggle the logarithmic x-axis scale so that uh, these data points are now spread out rather than all bunched together. Can also show guidelines that how see how the data points marry up to the different uh, axes. Uh, and again, I can, the, the uh, guidelines will change based on uh, whether it's linear or logarithmic view. I can also show a filter. Oop, filter, if I can grab it. And then this will allow me to um, uh, go back in time and see what the data points were like in different years, which is kind of neat. can also uh, just view different uh, consonants worth of data if I wanted. So just to turn these, toggle these on and off. So this is really good, this ability to, to filter the data uh, that I'm showing. Uh, something else I can do is not just use this, this two-dimensional plane here. I want to experiment with what I can do with the Z and X axis this way and what I could plot. So if we turn the Z axis back on, um, and now plotting the, the data points by their population uh, in the z-axis. So uh, anything towards the back of the room, like India and China, have got um, a higher population, and all these countries at the front have got less of a population. And the other thing I can do, other than just moving around this data, is pretty liberating and be able to immerse myself in the data, is that I can touch them. So if I grab these data points, uh, it gives me a bit more detail, so I can compare them and drag them and compare them side by side just like this if I wanted to, which is pretty neat, being able to do that. Uh, and then I can reset these back into position once I've finished uh, comparing them. So this ability to, to move around the data, like I said, is very liberating, uh, very exciting, and be able to reach out and touch the data gives this uh, element of, of interactiveness and, and, and tact tactileness to the data as well. So I'm gonna knock off the Z -act Z axis for now. The other thing I can do is I can use some basic statistical analysis and uh, do things like put them, use k means clustering to put them into clusters, which is kind of neat. So I can easily see uh, how the data relates to other data points in that data set. And then I can also do this in three dimensions. And it's worth mentioning when I'm viewing um, these data points, if, the, if, if they're in a certain cluster in two dimension, they might be in a different cluster in three dimensions because when I move to three dimensions, the proximity of the data points in relation to each other is recalculated. They might be actually very different uh, to as it was in, in two dimensions. So yeah, so I've got clustering in there built in using k-means clustering. Uh, and the other thing I can do is use uh, linear regression to identify like a trend line in the data, which is really good. And that'll work in both linear and logarithmic. And um, so what I can do is I can say things like, well, anything on that red line is kind of very on average for carbon emission intensity compared to the GDP per capita for that country. Anything above it, like Russia and this one here, what is it, China, South Africa, that's not good because their carbon emission intensity is higher than our average compared to the other countries. And in other countries below the line, uh, like here, Japan, for example, and maybe what's this one here, uh, Germany, I could say they're great, well, doing better because their uh, carbon emission intensity is below the trend line, below average for its GDP per capita based on the carbon in emission intensity. And remember, we don't want countries really high up in the y, -x -x y axis because that means they're producing a lot of CO2, um, especially if they're very populous countries like India and China. So I'm just going to reset those. The other thing I can do is I can see how the data has moved over time. Now, because I've got data points for a few years, what I'm doing here is plotting and seeing how the data, uh, where those data points were in 2013 and where they were in 2018, and then plotting a line between them. If the carbon emission intensity has actually increased, that's bad, so I'm making a red line like these ones here. If the carbon emission intensity was reduced, that's good. So I'm plotting uh, a green line like I'm doing here. So you can see generally that countries' carbon emission intensity uh, is, is decreasing over at this side. Uh, so that's, I can do that. can also do that in three dimensions. And this view is telling me loads. There's loads going on here. So I can see over five years, 
not only how the carbon emission intensity has changed by the change in the y-axis, I can also see how the GDP per capita has changed in the change in the x-axis. I can also see how the population's changed by the change in the z-axis. Uh, so there's actually a lot going on uh, in this view here. Let's turn that off and turn that off. I don't know what else can I do. The other thing is I can uh, completely change out the data set. So whilst I'm looking here at carbon emission intensity uh, versus GDP per capita, maybe I want to look at life expectancy. So here, uh, I'm going to put the trend line back on. Uh, I can see how the life expectancy relates to, to GBD, uh, GDP per capita. Uh, so I see here uh, Nigeria has got a much lower um, life expectancy on average of 52.55 years compared to somewhere like, I don't know, the United States, or let's grab another big one, what's this one, Mexico, Mexico, and they've got a life expectancy of average of 78.99 and 71, four years on average. This is pretty neat. can also um, put them into clusters if I wanted, just going to reset those positions. And the other thing I can do is maybe I'm not interested in being able to see my living room with this data. So I can actually toggle the full color pass through off here. And what I can see, I've got back into the more traditional virtual, virtual reality view. Uh, again, can move around this. I'm less distracted by my surroundings. Um, this is pretty neat. But maybe I don't want this plain gray default uh, um, experience. Maybe I want to show maybe in, in the context of a, like a virtual reality office like this and again I can move around to data without bumping into my sofa I can I can uh, look at the data in different angles uh, and I can interact with it manipulate the data put that back into 3d uh, and really see uh, what's going on um, with this data uh, when it comes to uh, the life expectancy versus GDP per capita it's really really neat really really useful so yeah so I hope you've liked that I'm going to turn uh, the VR office off and full color pass through. So that has been how we can experiment with data visualization and analysis and manipulation in uh, mixed reality. That was all done using C Sharp, Visual Studio, .NET. It's not using Unity, anything complicated like that. StereoKit is what's creating the magic here. It's done on Oculus Quest 3 headset, pretty cheap headset. $500 compared to something expensive like a HoloLens, which is $3,500. But we've got all this functionality. We can plot things in 3D space, move around, manipulate it, touch it, analyze it. Uh, and if you've liked that, follow me on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter, or go to leeengelson.com, and you'll see uh, more videos like this on my YouTube, and where I experiment with extended reality and artificial intelligence. I hope you've enjoyed that. Take care now. Bye. Thank you.